Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Suburban Homesteader, Wyoming, Arizona. This is Sandy. I thought I would take you through my process of painting this skull. Now, right now it just has um, a primer on it. It's actually a gesso that I put on there and I'm painting it out in my shed. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually paint the entire thing with a bronze paint. And this is by Rust-Oleum and it's very thick. It's what you, you people use on walls. And I'm gonna to try to get into every nook and cranny and I'll do the sides, the top, the bottom, the teeth, everything in this bronze color. And it's really coming along and it dries fairly fast. And so it's really interesting and I'm really taking note of where there's shadow. And I have it sitting up a little bit so in case there was any dampness in the paint, it's not gonna to stick to the paper. But I'm looking for shadows right now. Anything that light is reflecting, I'm looking. Because that will make a difference when I go to take this and I'm actually gonna paint it, uh, I'm gonna do a patina on it. And I've changed the paper so that I'm ready to paint my other colors. And I'm gonna put it on a stand, I'm gonna make the stand. And I'm actually gonna tell my granddaughter, Nisa, that it's a dinosaur skull. She will just be so excited, she loves dinosaurs. And of course, later I'll tell her that it's just a cow skull or a bull, I, don't, I can't really tell you which one it, it is. But it's interesting and these are just the paints I'm gonna use. I'm not buying any special patina paints, which you can, that's totally up to you, but they're very expensive. And you can just do it with regular paints and regular sponges. Now, I will use a lot of different sponges just because I want to not have to rinse those sponges out because I may want to use some of that same paint again. So I'm going to start out with the black and that was why I looked at shadows first. And so inwardly, I'm going to do a lot of shadows. Any place that I find that it cracks, crevices, holes, I'm going to accent those with the black. Now, as these colors dry, they become very matted, but don't worry about that because I am going to put a sealer on top of this. And actually I'm going to use two different sealers, a concrete sealer, and then a top coat that's a spray, just in case I missed anything with the, with the concrete sealer. And you might think, why am I using a concrete sealer? I happened to buy this concrete sealer when I was doing concrete rhubarb leaves but I found that you could use it on so many applications. Now see here, I'm doing um, different cracks and crevices in the skull. And I'm just moving my paint and my sponge around. If I get it too dark, I will turn my sponge and just blend it. Now remember, this is a process. So you can't just start with the black and go, oh, I don't like it. Because remember, we're going to add different colors and it's going to change and change and change. But we need some base. So we have the bronze and we have the black. And it's really going to just give it some depth. It's going to make it look old. And really, my hope is that you'll find it very interesting when we get all the way through. And remember, I'm not going to wash this sponge out until I'm completely done painting because sometimes you might put another color on, it's too much, you need to take the black. And so that's why I start out with several sponges and then I can just work and work and work. And you can either just dab, you can smear it. You could actually use a brush at some point. And later on, I'll show you one time when I did need to use a brush. But I really wanted to get some shadow in there. And so we're just going to keep working on the black. Now, as you can see how it's getting matte, matted. Some parts are darker. Some parts have a lot of black. Some parts hardly have any black, but don't worry about the matte color of it. It's perfectly okay. Okay. And it's really changing from that bright bronze into something that looks very old and interesting and you want to know the story behind it and that's 
part of the fun of being an artist. So I have it on the side now and you can see I'm trying to get the black in there. I'm trying to get it some on the teeth. Every nook, every crack, any time that I think there should be a shadow casting there, I want to do that. And so here's kind of an overview of it with just the black. Now, could I stop right there and just put the sealer on? I could. The sealer would make that black look like it was wet again, and it'd be very interesting, but it wouldn't have the patina effect that I want. And so when I'm doing the blue, I'm going to use both the dark blue and the Caribbean blue, which is kind of like a teal blue. And so I dip a new sponge in both colors. So one part has the light, one part has the dark, and I just twist the sponge around as I go. And it dries very quickly because you're not putting very much on at a time. And see how it's getting very matted. That's okay. Now, anytime you think it's too bright, you have too much of the light, you just turn that sponge around and add some of the dark. And if it's still too bright, you can always add a little bit of black again. And remember, it dries quickly, it changes, it absorbs into the other colors. So let's speed it up a little bit. And so you can just see the process that I'm just patting, changing the colors, trying to make it look older and more interesting. And sorry, there's a little camera um, shadow in there, but I have it upside down. You can see how it's really changing. Those light, light blues give some good accent, some as if the light is bouncing away from it. And I just find it so interesting. So I'm just going to every part that I think that I should have a little more color. And again, it's matted, but that's totally okay. But I'm just really liking the changes in there. And I like the process. You know, if I hated this at the end, I could just paint it again. But I've decided that I actually need um, some green and I'm using a metallic white with the green because of the bronze. Otherwise, I just use a regular white. And I'm going to use a new sponge. I'm going to shake a little bit of it on. And so the sponge will have both that silver, silvery white and the green. And the silver will make some good highlight colors. It will blend really well into it. And I think the combination of the two, both the blues and the greens, will really give it a much better patina look. And with a patina, you can do very little. You can do a whole area with patina. That's totally up to you. And there's a, a crack right in there. And the only way for me to get in was with a brush. And then I'm just rubbing it with my fingers and then I'll use the sponge again. So don't be afraid to think that, oh, I just have to use just the, the sponge. You can use whatever works for you, paper towels, anything that you can blend that around. But see how with that green, it's really giving it a great patina look. I know it's matted right now, but very soon we're gonna add the gloss to it. Now this part of the green I thought was too much. So I'm just taking my black and just adding a little bit, hardly any on my sponge, but just kind of toning it down. I thought it was just a little bit too, too much right there. And that's part of the fun. Sometimes I let it sit for a day or two and I come back to it and I'll look at it and it'll look differently. And then I can work again. Now my final color is the gold. And the gold is a good accent with the bronze. I'm not using very much. I'm using a new sponge. And I just want some real highlights. I want to control where it looks like the light is bouncing. And so I'm just going to do it a little bit at a time. And you're much better doing a little bit at a time and adding different layers than it putting too much on and having to cover that up or try to take it off with a wet sponge or a wet paintbrush but I want some highlights around where the eyes would be, along the top, 
And if I get there and I put too much on, I can always take my black sponge and tone it down some, or take my blue sponge and tone it down some. You're in control when you're painting. So I want some highlights, but I don't want to be too overpowering. So here it is. I'm going to let it dry overnight, but I'm really liking it. And it will change as it finishes drying, but it's got some good highlights. It's got some good shadows. And I think it's looking like a good dinosaur. <laughs> My grandkids will love it. Now I could hang that, put it so it hangs on the wall. I could do that, but I want to hang it so that it's on the table or an end table. I think it would look really great in a house that had a lot of Western or Native American stuff in there. I think it would be really cool. So I'm going to make a stand for it. And here's just some, oh, here's the gloss that I was talking about. It's just a concrete sealer, high gloss. I use a paintbrush and I just put it on. That's pretty warm in here today. And so I'll just do a little section at a time. Then I'll get some more on my brush and I'll do it again. But you can see that those colors are now looking like they're wet again. They're bright again. And it's really changes it. Not that I didn't like the matte, but I really like the gloss much better. And that's really personal preference because you can get sealers and you can get top coats that are matte. That's a personal choice. So there I'm just letting it dry for a while. I am going to spray a top coat, a clear coat, also just in places where I couldn't get the paintbrush. Now this is my disc. This is the bottom and I actually going to cut a piece of felt and hook that on there. But you can see as it's almost all the way dry, beautiful colors. I'm just really happy with it. But I'm going to work on that stand. Joe cut me um, three metal bars two seven inches and one four inches. So I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to put the felt on the bottom of my disc so that it doesn't scratch a table. I'm going to use a hot glue gun to secure those metal rods in there. And even though I painted this with the black paint that I used on the skull, I'm actually going to spray it with a spray paint that's by Rust-Oleum too. And so those rods just go right in there. That's the four inch one. The, the two in the back are seven inches. And this is the Rust-Oleum Rust um, that I'm just going to spray because I want no silver showing on any of the posts and it will give me a fine finish. It'll still be matte. So there it is right there. So I'm going to set the skull on there and I have particular spots underneath that it's going to fit on. And I actually put hot glue on the tip of each one of those so that I could secure it. So if somebody bumped it, it wouldn't be falling off. But I have to tell you, I am so happy with it. I love the colors. I find it very interesting and I think I'll just have it up for sale. We'll see what, um, if there's somebody that it would be a perfect place in their house. So as always like subscribe, share with the world. I'm going to take the camera and kind of give you a view all the way around it, but I am totally happy with it and I hope you like it too. I will see you next time.